Shalom, shalom, shalom. First, I want to give a praises and the glory to Yehawah, Bahashim, Yehawah Shai, Bahashim, Rakar Kodash, and double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone who are leading this word in truth and in spirit and sincerity. And salutations to all of the righteous, evil Israelites, brothers out there that are teaching this word in the name of Yehawah, Bahashim, Yehawah Shai, Bahashim, Rakar Kodash. Shalom, shalom to the Akiyam, to the Akwas. And shalom to the hopeful elect of Israel and praises and glory. Today we're gonna today we're gonna call it the judgment to all nations, right? Today's edification is called Judgment to All Nations. Right? So we're gonna go into the prophecies of the scriptures of the Bible, talking about the judgments upon the nations and about the chosen people of Israel, as we always speak about, yeah. So we're going to start in the book of Ecclesiasticus because as, you, as we can see and we continue to see that nations are once again puffing up their chests believing that they're a power unto their own. Governments around the world are puffing up their chests believing that they are power unto their own. And as we know, all power is given to them by the Almighty, Yahweh, who the world ignorantly calls God whose title is the Most High, but his name is Yahweh, which means he is. So all power is given unto governments, presidents, prime ministers, kings and queens of this world by the Most High, by Yahweh, through his son Yahweh Shai. So we're now we're starting to see a phase right now where once again, these governments of the world, their chefs are really puffing up in their own belief there. It's like that public enemy record, don't believe the hype. They believe in their own hype of their power, of where they are. But little do they know that, as I always speak of, is that what we see taking place is all according to prophecy. So we're going to start in the book of uh, Ecclesiasticus. And we're going to talk a little bit about, and then we're going to go into the book of the uh, Second Ezra's Wisdom of Solomon, bit of Psalms. We're going to bring out some precepts here and there. And we're going to talk about the judgments to these nations that the Lord speaks about, yeah? Judgments to all nations. Because as, although we always speak about Esau Edom in particular, because the Edomites are the main nation that are going to receive the most horrific judgment because they are the nation that's in power. So all power is going to be stripped from them completely. They're going to go back to be what the Bible talks of as a base men. But what we're going to show you today is that the judgment is not just on Esau, it's on all the heathen nations, all the adversaries of Jacob, right? All of those that came together in confederacy, Psalms 83, against the house of Israel. The ones that said, come let us cut them off from being a nation, right? The Lord talks about the judgment against all of the nations because ultimately the Lord is coming to take down all of the nations, not just the Edomites. The Edomites is just the main contender. Why? Because they hold the power. They're in the power sheet. They're in the power seat. But he's coming to take down all of the nations of all of the heathen nations all of them right the arabs the chinese the japanese the africans the um the east indians the pakistanis right the mongolians right all of these nations are going to be taken down all of these heathen nations none of them are going to stand when the lord comes right because he is coming with fire and brimstone and to do his work he has to take down the nation so there was a judgment coming upon all the nations so we're going to start in the book of Sarai in the book of Ecclesiasticus right chapter 36 right and we're going to speak of a judgment that Sarai prayed on that will come upon all the nations and we know that these this prayer that he prayed upon the nations is going to come to pass and that there's going to be no stopping none of these judgments that are prophesied in the Bible. None. All right? No one can stop it. No amount of money can buy anyone out of this. No matter how rich they are, these nations, how much military might and power they have, this judgment upon the nations has to come to pass. Why? Because it is prophesied in the scriptures. It's as simple as that. All right? So, the book of Sarai, chapter 35. We're going to start at the very top. Right? Chapter 36. So in the book of Sarai, 
known as the Book of Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, right? Chapter chapter 36, right? And we're going to start at the very top, right? And then we're going to read down to roughly to verse 17, right? And we're going to probably jump around while we're reading this as well. So it says here, have mercy upon us, O Lord, right? Yahweh, O Yahweh, the power of all, and behold us. And this is what I always speak about, that <laughs> we are at the mercy of the Lord. I can't, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? I can't keep on um, having to make you understand this, right? But I will continue telling this. We are at the mercy of the Lord, right? And I'm not, I'm not just talking the children of Israel, the whole world, right? But we, the chosen ones, the elect, the hopeful elect, we understand that we are at the mercy of the Lord, right? That's why we give all glory and guidance to our Lord and Saviour. So it says here, it says, verse 2, so the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, verse 2, it says, and send thy fear, right? So this is what Sirach is praying for. And send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee, because all these other nations do not seek after the Lord. I've spoken about this many times. They are seeking after other gods, idols. Some are worshiping Islam, Muhammad, the God of Muhammad, Islam. People worship Hindu gods, Sikh gods. There's nothing we can do. They're going to keep worshiping those gods until the skies crack, until our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, comes with the angels. They're going to keep continue worshiping those strange gods, those heathen gods, right up until that day. The Hindus, the Sikhs, the, the, the Muslims, the Buddhists, the Scientologists. The Catholic Church, the Christian Church, the Pentecostal Church, the Jehovah Witnesses, all that worship, white Jesus, right? Which is, a, like I said, it's, 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 it's a white Jesus is an ideology that goes back to the worshipping of Serapis based on, and the images that they see of so-called Jesus today, right? Is based on Cesar of Borgia, right? Which is um, the son of Rodrigo Borgia, Pope Alexander VI of Rome, all right? So... They're all in their own state of mind and conditions, worshiping other gods. They don't seek. They don't seek the power because the only people that are going to seek this power are the elect. The only people. The rest of the nations, right, and the rest of Israel, are not going to seek this power. Why? Because what this power was going to bring. He's not coming to deliver all nations. He's coming to judge all nations, and he's only coming to deliver one third of the house of Israel, right? Of the children of Israel, one third, which are spoken of of the elect, the eklektos in the Greek, chosen, right? Which includes 144,000, the 12,000 from the 12 tribes. He's not coming to deliver the nations. He's not coming to deliver people from other nations, from other beliefs, you know, from other so-called nationalities. He's, he's only coming to deliver his people. And this is one of the main st stop gaps for those people in those demonic satanic catholic churches because they are worshiping white jesus white mary jesus loves everyone bullshit along with every other christian institution whether it's a black pentecostal church whether it's the seven day adventist the mormons the church of latter-day saints whether it's the protestant church whether it's the um jehovah witnesses they all believe in the same white jesus loves everyone bullshit all right Nothing we can do about that. They're going to keep worshipping that devil right up until the true power shows himself. And he is coming, and he is absolutely coming to show himself and to bring the judgment to these nations and to the wicked two-thirds of the house of Israel. He's absolutely coming. And that's a surety, all right, that no one can escape. So he says here, he says, lift up thine hand against the strange nations, because they're all strange nations to the Lord. They, the Lord knows what they're doing, but they're strange because they're not his people, right? Lift up thy hands against the strange nations and let them see thy power, right? And thou was sanctified in us before them. So be thou magnified among them before us, right? So he's saying thou, right, was sanctified in us before them because we were his chosen. We were predestined from the beginning. Right? The promise was given to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, right? Not to Abraham, Isaac and Ishmael or any one of Abraham's other sons. It was the promised line was Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. 
So, Sirach is saying here, as thou wast sanctified in us before them, before all the other nations, he chose us, he chose Israel, he chose Jacob, he chose Isaac, he chose Abraham, all right? That's the chosen line. He says, and let them know thee as we have known thee. And there is no power, but only thou, O power. So when he said, they let them know thee like, like we have known thee, how have we known the Lord? We've known him through his judgments. We've known him through his mercy and also through his judgments. So he's coming to let these nations know him through his judgments. All right? All of these heathen nations. He's coming to let the wicked two thirds of the house of Israel, of our own people, all right? We know who the true children of Israel are. We speak about them week in and week out. Those of us that descend from the transatlantic slave trade and the descendants of the Native American Indian tribes, today they call Latinos, Hispanics, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans. Those are the true children of Israel. Israel is also mixed amongst some of the other nations. That's a fact. That's why the Lord is coming to gather us from the four corners. So Sirach says here, and let them know thee as we have known thee. So he's gonna let them know them like we have known him, right? So he says, show new signs and make other strange wonders. Glorify thine hand and thy right arm that they may set forth thy wondrous works, right? Raise up the indignation. This is what he's saying. This is what we are saying. Same thing what Sirach is saying. This is what we are praying for every night. We wait for the Lord to raise up his indignation. All right, and what is the indignation? That's the righteous anger of the Lord. It's a righteous judgment. You see the world, listen. We're living in a world where everything is upside down, back to front, you know, reversed. But men lie with men, women lie with women. They've over-sexualized our children. They've, they're feeding us genetically modified processed foods week in and week out. They're poisoning us with their so-called pharmaceutical drugs, right? You know, the, the, they, they, they go around the world claiming to be, you know, the, the authority of the world. You know, these, these spy agencies, the CIA, the CIA, the biggest cartel, the biggest drug cartel in the world is the CIA. But yet America flies this flag, say no to drugs. We're fighting the cartels, we're fighting this and that. The CIA are the biggest cartel in the world. They're the biggest drug cartel in the world. And they're working alongside the other, um, what do you call it, spy agencies around the world. Whether it's drugs, whether it's funneling um, illegal guns and weapons, whether it's creating terrorist groups and units, they're all involved. They're all involved in this wickedness which keeps them, enables them to keep these secret agencies open so they can justify the, the money that they receive for them to keep control because that's how they keep control of the world through their secret societies through their spy agencies and through their shadow governments and through their elites social elites their super elites right and as we know the new world order controls it all right starting with the the, the Rothschilds the Rockefellers the Oppenheimers the Vanderbilts the JP Morgans they're all involved all of these banking families control these secret societies and they also control these secret agencies right whether it's the mi5 mi6 cia mossad they're all controlled by the secret societies by the new w world order for them to keep what they're doing going but all what they're doing is just preparing themselves for the great judgment that's coming down from our lord and savior Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. It's as simple as that. Everything that they're doing is that they're just preparing themselves, prepping themselves for this great judgment to come. So, so Sirach is saying this here, right, verse 7. So we're in the book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, verse 7. It says, raise up indignation and pour out wrath. Take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. So how is the Lord going to do that? Let's get a preset for that. How is the Lord coming to do that? So if we go to, we're gonna go to, come back there. We're gonna go to Second Ezra, chapter 13 speaks about how the Lord is gonna do this, right? How the Lord is gonna, what, what Sirach is asking here, when he says, raise up indignation, which is righteous anger, all right? and pour out wrath and take away the adversary and destroy the enemy so the lord himself is coming with the angels to do that all right 
with all of the archangels, Michael, Gabriel, Ariel, Raphael, all of the archangels and the, and the tens and tens and tens of thousands of legions of angels that he's going to be coming with, our Lord and Saviour. So how is he going to do this? The same thing what Sirach is speaking of here. He's saying to the Lord, make, he says, raise up the indignation, right? The righteous anger. This is what we pray for. The same thing what Sirach can ask for here. And pour out the wrath to put all this wickedness that we see going on in this world, this hypocritical world, right? This demonic, satanic, right? This over-sexualized, homosexual, right? Bisexual, transgender, bigender, right? This world is completely, completely upside down, back to front. Everything about this place is demonic, satanic, over-sexualized, hypocritical. It's, there's, there's no righteousness running through this world right now, except the men of the Lord who are teaching who are waking up the hope for the elect of Israel. Those of us that truly are waiting for our deliverer, Yahweh Shai, all right? What we see going on right now is pure wickedness and evil. We've seen it. And the people are gonna continue suffering under this wickedness because how they get them to accept this is that they always make sure a section of the people them are doing okay while the majority are down on their feet. So, you know, or on their knees, sorry, all right? They, they, they look after a small section and use them to control the massives that are on their knees and things are going to get worse right things are going to get worse right people just don't realize that we are living in the last days and things are going to get worse out there i spoke about this many times before and i'll speak about this again things are going to get worse out there this man is getting ready to show his teeth and it's a beautiful thing because that once again tells us that this prophecy that I'm going to read now is coming very close. It's coming very close. All right. So, Sirach says, raise up indignation, pour out wrath and take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. So how is the Lord going to do this? So let's go straight to the point. Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 1. Uh, yeah. Verse 1, it says, and it came to pass after seven days, right? I dreamed a dream by night. This is Ezra's, right? And lo. Making a lot of noise there, the old bike. He says, and lo, there arose a wind from the sea that is moved of all the waves thereof, right? And I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. That's Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. So listen carefully. This is how that righteous indignation, that wrath, that, that um, Sirach spoke of. This is how he's gonna take away the adversary and destroy the enemy and pour out his wrath. It's this man here that we're speaking of. And I beheld and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven, that's Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ with all of the angels, right? And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burnt that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it feeleth the fire. So that voice that came out of his mouth, that's the lasers that were coming out of the chariots. The Lord himself is gonna be traveling in the biggest chariot this world has ever seen. I mean, I can't, this chariot can be the size of a city or a country. I can't say to you exactly what size, but it's gonna be, the, this chariot is gonna bring this is going to be part of the darkness that's going to behold the world. When the scripture talks about the darkness shall become the world, this is going to be part of it because that chariot is going to block out all of the sunlight, right? Because I, I can see the Lord coming on a day like this, on a bright day like this, when the sun is shining bright, the skies are blue, there's not a single cloud in the sky, and then all of a sudden you see chariots appearing everywhere in the sky and then you see the biggest chariot of all chariots just like independence day in the movie independence day appearing in the sky and that's going to be bringing part of the darkness right alongside the nuclear missiles that are going to be fired by the nations where we're going to get the mushroom clouds right that's going to come from the destruction of the nuclear of these nuclear weapons that's also going to play a part in bringing darkness upon the earth but i can see the lord's chariot itself playing a major part in bringing that darkness upon the earth it's going to shine across it's going to listen it's going to block out so much light you just can't imagine how big this chariot's going to be now they've been reporting seeing sightings of the lords of, of the angels chariots for years for years and years and years and they call them uaps and ufos 
So they've been speaking on this for years. That they, they can't explain the phenomenon of these UAPs, unidentified um, aerial phenomena or UFOs, unidentified flying objects. They can't explain the movement of them, how they can go left to right, up and down, how quick they move, how quick they can stop. They can't see no propulsion coming from them. How they can just go into the sea and go straight to the bottom and come out of the water like nothing. They can't explain it. But they have recordings, right? The military have recordings of these. And they've been recording the sightings of the Lord's, of the Lord's angels in their chariots for decades. So this is how the Lord himself is coming. With his angels, right? To pour out this wrath. This righteous indignation this is how he's coming right to take away the adversary and to destroy the enemy and the enemy are all of the heathen nations all of the other nations the lord's main enemy is esau edom but this is about taking out all of the nations because all of the nations are going to be taken down the scripture says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall tell because they're all going to be speaking that story on the day so it says, there, it says, so verse 4, 2 Ezra chapter 13, verse 4. He says, and whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burnt that heard his voice. That voice that came out of his mouth, that's the laser beams, right? That's some sort of um, hypo nuclear laser beams that come out of his chariots. I, I can't say to you exactly how powerful it's going to be, but all I know is that it's going to be like when you're watching that movie, um, War of the Worlds right with tom cruise when you saw those chariots coming out of the sky and they were just zapping people one zap just disintegrate people it's gonna, it's gonna be something as simple as that and that's what we're gonna see so he says and when so whether the voice went out of his mouth all they burnt that heard his voice like as the earth faileth when it feeleth the fire right it says and after this i beheld and lo there was gathered together a multitude of men of the number right a multitude of men out of, out of a number from the four winds of the heavens so that's the NATO that's all of the allies that are going to come together to fight against the Lord NATO and his allies the Russians the Chinese they're all going to gather together they're all going to come together as one they're all going to be singing one song one tune one hymn to fight the Lord right because why because the Lord himself Yahweh Shai is going to put the spirit on these nations to fight even though he's, they're going to be so terrified at the sight of his chariots, he's going to put the spirit on them to fight, right? Because the, the prophecies has to be fulfilled on how the war of Armageddon is going to go down. It's as simple as that. So he says there, and after this I beheld, so we're in verse 5, 2nd Ezra chapter 13, verse 5. It says, and after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of a number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. So who's the man that's come out of the sea? That's Yahweh Shai and his chariots, all right? That's the angels and their chariots, right? They're going to be coming from the east, all right? You're going to see them rising up. If you can see when you watch the sun, if you can imagine when you watch the sunset, if you're watching the sunset go down, right, and it's and you're standing in front of the ocean if you're sitting on the seaside of the ocean or anywhere in the world right um there's a place in jamaica called um rick's calf where you can go to and you can watch the sunset go down and the sun sets in the west and rises in the east and when you watch it go down from rick's calf you can, it seems like it's going down into the sea but it's not going down into the sea it's just that that's as far as you can see so if you can imagine they see these chariots rise up they're not actually coming out of the sea it's just that where they're looking from their vantage point, it looks like the vision that Ezra's had, it looked like they were actually coming out of the sea, but it was just actually rising. So check it out. Go look at any sunset that you can see. And it's from a seashore or any beach or whatever, and you're watching it and you're seeing the sun go down in the west. It looks like it's going down into the sea, but it's not. It's just setting. The sun is setting. It's going down. All right. And it rises in the east. The same thing. If you're looking at it, if you're looking at the sunset, the sunrise from the beach and you're looking from the any vantage point of a beach it looks like it's coming out of the sea but it's not it's just that's as far as you can see so that's the vision that Ezra's had he saw the chariots from that vantage point looking like they were rising out of the sea but it was coming from the heavens right they were rising from the heavens and that's how they're going to see it so it says and after this I beheld and lo there was gathered together a multitude of men out of a number from the four winds of the heavens to subdue the man that came out of the sea but I beheld and lo he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it so what was that great mountain 
that was the chariot, that was the UFO, that was the UAP, right? Ezra said it looked like a great mountain. Why? Because he couldn't see where it started and he couldn't see where it finished. So to him, it looked like a great mountain. Remember, they've never seen these phenomena before, never. So they've got to describe it to the best of their ability. But this is how it's going to go down when he comes to come up, when he comes, when the Lord himself comes to fight against these nations. This is exactly how it's going to go down. So he says, but I would have seen, Ezra says, but I would have seen the region or place where out the hill was graven and I could not. So the chariot of the Lord was so big of Yahawashah's chariot. Ezra couldn't see where it started or where it finished. That's how big it is. And this is why I say to you, it could be the size, size of a city, two cities. It could be the size of a country. <laughs> All I know, it's gonna be the greatest thing the world has ever seen. And it's gonna play a part in bringing the darkness during the war of Armageddon. When the scripture talks about a darkness, um, and, the, and the, the, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall be darkened the chariots are going to play a part in darkening that because it's not just the, the Lord's chariot remember he's coming with legions and legions of angels now those angels chariots could be attached to the Lord's chariots or they could be coming individually <laughs> we're going to know on that day we're going to know on that day but all we know that he's coming with tens and tens and tens of thousands of legions of angels so verse 8 so 2nd Ezra chapter 13 verse 8 so it says, and after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were so afraid and yet does fight. So they're going to be terrified. They're going to be terrified of what they see. All right? But they're going to fight. Why? Because the Lord is going to put the spirit on these nations to fight. But they're going to be terrified, but he's going to put the spirit on them to fight. All right? So it says, and lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand nor held a sword nor any instrument of war but only i saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips a flaming breath and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests and they all were mixed together and the, the blast of fire the flaming breath the great tempest and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight and burnt them up every one so that upon a sudden of an so that on a so that upon a sudden of a, of an innumerable innumerable multitude nothing was to be perceived but only dust and the smell of smoke right we when i saw this i was afraid so ezra saw the chariots firing some type of nuclear laser hydro nuclear laser hydrothermal nuclear laser power using to fight against NATO and his allies. That's what he saw, firing. So I say again, if you ever watch that movie, War of the Worlds with Tom Cruise, you'll understand where, um, what was his name that wrote? I'm trying to think the name of the man that, that wrote the, the, the movie. Uh, shit, I can see his face. Uh, Oliver, not Oliver, oh shit. I forget his name. But this is where you got the story from. This is where they got the story from. The man that wrote the book, War of the World, this is where he got inspiration from, from the book of Second Ezra. He didn't come up with some idea of, of um, UFOs coming upon the earth and zapping people and killing everyone, right? The majority of the world and taking over the world. He didn't get that idea from just sitting down one day and writing a book. He got that idea from the book of Second Ezra. All right, I can't forget. I can't try to remember the man's name. Uh, hold on. Let me just quickly get his, his name. It's come to me. I don't really want to. Now that I've spoken about him, let's just get his name. War of the Worlds. Let's quickly get this up. I see his face, but I just can't get his name again. George something, is his name George something? H.G. Wells. I'm thinking of George Orwell. I've got George Orwell on my mind. He's another man that wrote about things that are gonna happen in the last days. But H.G. Wells, that's the man that wrote the book War of the Worlds. He got that information from the scriptures, just so you understand, all right? To, from, to, to get the inspiration to write that book. So it says here, we go back to 
verse 10. Second Ezra chapter 13, verse 10. But only I saw that he said out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire and out of his lips a flaming breath and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests and laser beams out of the chariots. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath and the great tempest, right? And fell with violence upon the multitude, right? Upon the armies that came to fight against the Lord, the NATO and his allies and all the other heathen nations, which was prepared to fight because they were prepared to fight. Why? Because they was already in a war with each other, right? They was already fighting each other in World War Three. And then when they saw this, this, um, when they saw the chariots coming from the skies, when they saw the threats, that's the word I'm looking for. When they saw this, this um, independent threat coming upon all of them, all of the nations joined together now to fight against the Lord, right? So that's why it says they were prepared to fight because they was already in a war with each other. Because that's when the Lord is going to come. The Lord is going to come in the middle of World War Three, at some point during World War Three, when the nations are firing nuclear missiles on each other. At some point, the Lord is going to show himself. He's going to show himself, right? That's why it says, which was prepared to fight. They were all prepared to fight because all of the armies were already in battle. And he says, and burnt them up, everyone, so that upon a sudden of an... So that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, but only the dust and the smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid, because this even terrified Ezra. Because I keep saying, you got to remember, Ezra's lived roughly 2,500 years ago. He's witnessing technology and power that he could only, he couldn't even imagine it because he's never seen it. He couldn't even dream that sort of thing. This is why the Lord put him in a deep sleep and gave him the vision in his dream of what's going to take place in the last days on how the Lord was going to come right and raise up indignation and pour out his wrath and take away the adversary and destroy the enemy you understand so this is why Ezra was so afraid he's never seen such power in his life he's never seen such destruction so much bloodshed he's never seen so much devastation so this is why he, he was he, he himself said I was afraid and he's only seeing the vision so he would have been in in some sort of advantage point standing and watching the whole thing take place. That's what we must understand. So it says afterwards, so Ezra says afterwards, verse 12, 2nd Ezra chapter 13, verse 12. So he says, afterwards I saw the same man come down from the mountain, come down from the chariot, right? The same man that's Yahweh Shai, right? In the world. Who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, right? So he says, Afterwards, I saw the same man come down from the mountain and call unto him and another and other peaceful multitude, right? And there came up much people unto him, wherefore some were glad. So this is the elect now that the Lord is delivering from this destruction that he's bringing upon these nations, right? And there came much people unto him, wherefore some were glad, some were sorry. Some of them were bound and some were brought of them that were offered. Then was I sick through great fear and I awakened and said. So he says, some were glad, those were the elect, they were glad because they've been delivered. They're glad that this man has been taken down, that these nations and these heathens and this whole world society has been taken down. This whole new world order has been taken down to its knees. So those, the ones that were glad would have been what we call the hopeful elect, the chosen, the eclectos, right? Some were sorry, right? Some of them were bound. Who are going to be bound? The heathens, in particular the Edomites. They're going to be bound. Remember the scripture says, He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He that kills with the sword must be killed with the sword. So they're going to be bound. This is when we talk about slavery, going to be in the kingdom of heaven because these nations are going to be bound. And in particular, the Edomites are going to be bound in, in fetters of irons and chains, all right? So some were bound, and some of them were bought of them that were offered. Then was I sick through great fear, right? And I awakened and said, Thou hast showed thy servant wonders from the beginning, and hast counted me worthy that thou shouldest receive my prayer, right? So he says, Show me the interpretation of the dream. So let's just put it. So he says, Show me the interpretation of the dream, right? He says, for as I conceived in my understanding, woe unto them that shall be left in those days, right? And much more woe unto them that are not left behind, right? For they that were not left were in heaviness. 
So for they that were not left, and who are not going to be left, the elect, the eclectos, the chosen, they're not going to be left behind, was in heaviness, right? For they that were not left behind were in heaviness. Now understand, either things that are laid up in the latter days, as we say, these are all events that are going to take place in the last days, in the latter days. Now understand either things that are laid up in the latter days, which shall happen unto them and to those that are left behind. So those that are left behind are going to have to face the destruction. They're going to have to face the nuclear war. They're going to have to face the devastation. They're going to have to face famine, the suffering. They're going to have to face the judgments. They're going to have to face the captivity. They're going to, listen, they're going to have to face the death, right? They're going to have to face the sickness, the, 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 the poison of the water. They're going to have to face all of these things that are going to be taking place during the war of Armageddon, all right? It says, therefore are they come unto the great perils and many necessities like as the dreams declare. It says, yes, it is easier for him that is in danger to come into these things than to pass away as a cloud out of the world and to not to see these things that have happened in the last days. And he answered and said unto me. So the angel answered and said unto Ezra's, right? He says, the interpretation of the vision shall I show thee and I will open unto thee the thing which thou, which thou has required, right? It says, whereas thou hast spoken of them that are left behind, this is the interpretation. He that shall endure the peril in that time has kept himself. They that be fallen into danger are such as have works and faith towards the Almighty. Know this therefore that they which be left behind are more blessed than they that be dead. Right? Because those of us that are going to be delivered, we're going to have to be here. Right? We're not going to die during the destruction. The Lord is going to... I said this before. Because he's going to come during the destruction, he's going to be gathering Israel from the four corners of the world. So we're going to survive the nuclear bombs. When I say we, the hopeful elect. We're going to survive the war, the nuclear bombs. We're going to survive the persecutions, the famine, the concentration camps. Wherever we may be, the elect of Israel, they're going to survive that because that's where they're going to get delivered at. They're going to get delivered out of all of those things, right? So it says, Know this therefore that they which are left behind are more blessed than they which be dead. This is the meaning of the vision, whereas thou sawest a man coming up from the midst of the sea. The same is he whom, listen carefully, whom the most high, the highest, has kept a great season, which by his own self shall deliver his creature, and he shall order them that are left behind. So who are his creatures? The elect, the chosen of Israel, the eclectos. Right? Because we are all creatures of the Lord, but it's coming for the chosen creatures. That's what he says. Alright? So it says. So it says there, the same is he whom the most high as highest has kept a great season, which by his own self shall deliver his creature, and he shall order them that are left behind. And whereas thou sawest that out of his mouth there came a blast of wind and fire and storm, and that he held neither sword nor instrument of war. But they that are rushing in of him destroyed the whole multitude that came to subdue him. This is the interpretation. Right? Listen carefully. It says, Behold, the days come when who? When the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. So who is he coming to deliver? He's coming to deliver the hope for the elect. The elect of Israel, the chosen. The 144,000, the 12,000 from the 12 tribes of Israel and the one third, the mixed multitude. Right? So he says, Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them which are upon the earth. And he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. And one shall undertake to fight against another. That's the war of Armageddon. The nations are going to be fighting against each other. NATO and its allies will be fighting against the Russians and the Chinese and their allies during that war of Armageddon. And that's when the Lord is going to show himself during that war itself. So he says, and one shall undertake to fight against another. One city against another one place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another. So there's going to be civil unrest and there's going to be international unrest. So you're going to have divisions in countries and then you're going to have countries that are going to go to war against each other in this war of Armageddon. Just like the scripture says. And it says, and this time shall, verse 32, and it says, and this time shall be when these things shall come to pass and the signs shall happen, right? And the signs shall happen which I showed thee before. And then shall my son be declared. So who is his son? That's Yahushai. 
as to the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. So that's so when all of this war is going on, the war of Armageddon that we speak of, right? When the nations are fighting each other in World War Three, when nuclear missiles are going to be fired from the north to the south, from the east to the west, the Russians against the Americans, against their NATO allies. So in the mix of this war of Armageddon, that's going to be taking place. All right? That's when he's going to show his son. That's when the deliverance is going to come to the elect. So it says, and the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, the signs shall happen when I shall show thee, right? When I shall show thee before, and then shall my son be declared. That's Yahweh Shai, whom thou saw as a man ascending, coming in his chariots. So that's when he's going to declare his son that's going to be coming in his chariots himself, all right? It says, and when all the people hear his voice, all right? Every man shall in their own land leave the battle. They have one against another. So just like I said, so the nations that are going to be fighting against each other in this war of Armageddon, all right? So you're going to have nation against nation, country against country, all right? The West against the East, all right? So it says, and when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle. They have one against another, all right? So they're going to lead the battle that they fight against each other. And this is when they're going to come together. All the nations are going to come together to fight against the Lord himself. All right. All of the nations are going to join hands. What are you going to see? It says, and when all the people hear his voice, every man. So we're still in the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 13, verse 33. All right. 2nd Ezra, chapter 13, verse 33. And when all the people and all the nations see his wonders, hear his voice, Every man in their own land shall lead the battle they have one against another because the main battle is going to be taking place where in the Middle East, right? In the Valley of Jehoshaphat, right? In the Valley of Judgment. That's where the main battle is going to be taking place in what we know today as the Middle East, right? It says, An innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. So, all of the so the, the innumerable multitude that shall be gathered together are all of the nations that are going to be coming together to fight against the Lord. They're all going to gather together to fight against the Lord on the day of Armageddon. All right. So it says, an innumerable multitude, which are all of the nations gathered together, all right, shall be gathered together as thou sawest them willing to come. They're going to be willing to come and fight this war, and to overcome Him. Who they're looking to overcome? Yahweh Shai. Who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, all right? By fighting. But he shall what? Upon the top of the Mount Zion, but he shall stand, Yahweh Shai shall stand upon top of Mount Zion, and Zion shall come and shall be shown to all men, being prepared and builded like as thou sawest the hill graven without hands, all right? So you're gonna see the chariot, it's gonna be standing upon Mount Zion, all right? the Mount of Olives is going to be coming over the Mount because remember the, the war itself the war of Armageddon is going to take place in the Middle East that's where it's all going to come together that's where the main battlefield is going to be right in what we call today the Middle East previously known as the Fertile Crescent or Mesopotamia that's where the main war is going to take place that's why none of the nations are able to leave the Middle East Every time a nation says they're coming out of the Middle East, something keeps them back in there. Why? Because the Lord is getting all of the nations ready and prepared for the war of Armageddon, right? For his coming. It says, and this my son shall rebuke, and this my son shall rebuke the wicked inventions of the nations, right? So he's going to rebuke all of these nations with the powers that he's coming in the chariots with the angels to take down these nations and this my son shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest right and shall lay before them their evil thoughts because they really think they're going to be able to take down the lord you see the proudness of this man the proudness of these edomites and their allies they really believe that they're going to be able to take down the lord and the angels this is why they're creating their space force this is why they're creating their, 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 um, their, each of these countries, the Russians, the Americans, the Britons, the French, they're all creating a space force. Why? Why are they creating a space force? Because they're getting ready for the coming of the Lord. They've already told you about the, 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 the UFOs and the UAPs that they're seeing, but they're trying to sell it to you and say, oh, the UFOs and UAPs are aliens. They're not aliens. They are angels. They are the Lord's angels in the chariots. They just happen to call them UAPs and UFOs. So this is why these nations are preparing their space force because they're getting ready 
for the coming of the Lord. They're getting ready for the war of Armageddon. Don't believe for a second that the elites and the super elites don't understand the scriptures. Don't believe that these over-educated so-called Edomites and the rest of these nations haven't spent all of their money, not all of their money, but you know, parts of their money on understanding and getting a true understanding of these scriptures. Don't believe for a second that these elites and super elites are not watching our videos to get even more understanding of the prophecies of the Bible, all right? They are absolutely know what's coming. This is why these elites and super elites, billionaires, multi-billionaires, these socialites, aristocrats, they're all building their underground bunkers and so forth. They, they all, they, they are getting ready. It's your average John Doe, it's your average heathen that doesn't know what's coming because they are keeping them busy with all of this social media madness, with this celebrity madness. They're keeping them busy with all of these things that they're selling them, right? With this reality TV bullshit. They're keeping the nations, they're dumbing down the nations and not actually letting them know what's about to take part. But the elites and the super elites understand what's coming because they are the most educated people on this planet. And don't believe for a second that they haven't had men, true men of the Lord, right who they have paid to give them an understanding of what's coming and don't believe for a second that they're not have been studying the men of the lord the hebrew israelite men who have been breaking down these scriptures for years now don't believe for a second that these elites are not sitting down and studying our videos to get an understanding of what's coming so the scripture says verse 37 second ezra chapter 13 verse 37 and this my son shall rebuke the and this my son yahweh shai all right, shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest and shall lay before them their evil thoughts and their torments wherewith they have wherewith they shall begin to be tormented which are like unto a flame and he shall destroy them without labor by the law which is like unto fire so those chariots are going to possess nuclear fire thermonuclear fire powers that we have not seen that we can't even imagine just like what those military pilots were saying right that when they saw the chariots do these the movements that they were doing they could not be explained they said the chariots that they saw right the ufos and the uaps that they saw they said that their technology was between a hundred and a thousand years superior to what anything they have today they could not explain the movement of those ufos why because they are the chariots of the lord they are not little green men they are angels that are in those chariots and they are here preparing themselves for this war, great war of armageddon and for the great second coming of their lord and our lord yahweh shai who the world ignorantly calls jesus christ so it says and whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto them those are who the ten tribes all right which are part of the 12 tribes of Israel. Those are the 10 tribes which are carried away prisoners at their own land in the time of Hosea, the king of Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, who led them away captive and he carried them over the waters and they came to another land. And that another land that they came to was the Americas. This is why the, when we speak about the Israelites are scattered to the four corners of the world, absolutely. They are scattered to the four corners of the world. So this is what's gonna take place. So when we go back to the book of Sarak, Sarak says here, raise up, raise up your indignation and pour out your wrath. Take away the adversary and destroy the enemy. Who are the enemy? The enemy are the heathens. The enemy are all of Esau, Edom, the Edomites and their allies, right? These are the enemies of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, right? These are his enemies. These are the enemies of the children of Israel. These are the enemies of the Israelites. These are the enemies of the hopefully elect, the elect of Israel. The 144,000 and the one third. He says, make the time short. Remember the covenant. And that's what he's gonna do. He's gonna make, this is why, when we say that we're in the last days, the Lord is making this time short, why? Because he's remembered the covenant. Who did he make the covenant with? The covenant was made between Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and Jacob's 12 sons. No other nation is a part of the Most High's covenant that he gave. He's got a chosen people and those chosen people who he's coming for in these last days, but only the elect of those chosen people. So he says, so Sarak says here, make the time short, remember the covenant and let them declare thy wonderful works. Let him that escapest be consumed by the rage of the fire and let them perish that oppress the people. 
So he's going to make sure we've been oppressed. We have been oppressed by these people for so long. You see, what they must understand, and I say this again, all right? There's no way on God's earth are they going to get away with slavery. They've got to pay for slavery. They've got to pay for the genocide that they did to the Native American Indian tribe. They got to pay for the, all the lands that they stole, the people that they murdered, pillaged, raped and killed. They got to pay to what they did to the Aborigines. They got to pay what they did to the Native American Indian tribes of North South America and Canada, who are the 10 lost tribes of Israel. They got to pay what they did to the African Americans, West Indians and Caribbeans and Haitians and Dominicans, all of those that descend from the transatlantic slave trade. There is no way on God's earth are these Edomites gonna get away with what they did to the Most High's chosen people. There's no way. They got to pay. They're going around the world always claiming vengeance. Everywhere they go, 9-11 happened, they went and claimed vengeance. They went to Afghanistan and bombed the fuck out of it. They went to Iraq and bombed the fuck out of it. They went to Libya. Everywhere they, they want, they want vengeance for everything that happens to them. But yet, this so-called white man don't believe that he is gonna have to pay for his crimes. You're gonna have to pay Esau. You're gonna have to pay for your crimes. So says the Lord, not so says me, so says the Lord. All right, simple as that. So he says here, let him that escapeth be consumed by the rage of the fire and let them perish that oppress the people. Smite in sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathens. This is what the Lord is coming to do. He's coming to take down all of these heathen nations. All right, that say, it says smite in sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathens that say there is none other but we because they believe they're a power unto their own, these heathens, right? They believe that they're their own power. They don't know that it's the Most High that set them up and put them in the power seat. And it's the Most High that's coming to take them out of their power seat in a spectacular way. It's going to be the greatest show the world has ever seen. So he says here, Smite in sunder the heads of the rulers of the heathens that say there is none other but we. Gather all the tribes of Jacob together and inherit thou them as from the beginning. So Sirach ain't saying, right? He's not saying gather anyone that believes in you, Lord. Gather anyone that believes that you're the true power, you're the true God. Gather anyone that prays to you or wants you to be their power. No, Sirach is specifically telling you, he says gather. So we're in the book of Sirach, chapter 36. Right, the book of Ecclesiasticus, which is Sirach, chapter 36, right? Verse 11 in the Apocrypha. Gather all the tribes of Jacob, which are the 12 tribes of Israel, all right? To, it says, gather all the tribes of Jacob together, all right? And inherit thou them as from the beginning, because the covenant was between Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and nothing has changed. Not a single thing has changed, all right? That's what we must understand. He says, O Lord, have mercy upon the people that is what that is called by thy name so he's not saying have mercy upon anybody that believes in you lord or have mercy on anyone that wants to repent and believe in you lord right because only israel can repent he's saying have mercy on all those that are called by thy name who are called by his name the israelites the hebrew israelites the children of israel jacob's 12 sons the 12 tribes of israel right the children of jacob there's no other nation, there's no other people that is called by that name. Israel means what? Prince of power, Yasharala, Prince of power. So Sarak says, O oh Lord, have mercy upon the people that is what? That is called by thy name. All right? And upon Israel, whom thou hast named thy firstborn. It's not about everyone. Not everyone can receive salvation. Only the elect of Israel. Only the elect of Israel. It says, O oh, be merciful unto Jerusalem, thy holy city, the place of thy rest. Fill Zion with thy unspeakable oracles and thy people with thy glory. Give testimony unto those that thou hast what? Possessed from the beginning. So who has the Lord possessed from the beginning? The children of Israel, right? Give testimony unto those that has possessed from the beginning and raised up prophets that have been in thy name. So we are the prophets here today. I say this humbly with a humble spirit. We are the Lord's prophets here today speaking on the oracles and the prophecies of the Bible. The scripture tells you in Jeremiah, let's quickly pull it out, the precept here. 
Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 8. All right, listen carefully once again. It says, The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. All right? And that's what we're here today. We are the prophets of old that are here today in the reincarnation that are prophesying against great kingdoms, the kingdom of Esau, Edom. You know, what's the greatest kingdom today? America. We prophesy against America, Babylon the Great, right? Spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt, right? We prophesy against great kingdoms. We're prophesying of war. We're telling you about the war of Armageddon that's coming, World War Three. We don't stop talking about World War Three, the war of Armageddon, right? And of evil, we're prophesying about the evil that this man is going to put out there. So what's part of this evil plan? The mark of the beast, which is the microchip, right? We prophesy about that all the time, right? To the point where you talk about that, they want to take down your videos, right? Right? And of pestilence, right? So we're prophesying about the pestilence, which can come in the form of a famine, can come in the form of through the nuclear destruction, you know, through the... Um, the chemical and biological stuff that comes from these nuclear weapons. We prophesy about all these things all the time because we are the prophets of old that are here today. So it's no different back then than it is today because the prophets that have been before me, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Joel, Obadiah, um, Isaiah, Daniel, David, Solomon. I can go right through, right? Jonah. All of the prophets of old, Zechariah, Zephaniah, the prophets that have been before me, that were before me, and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries, right? And against great kingdoms of war and of evil of pestilence. Why is that? Because the Lord always makes sure his prophets are risen up in when he's coming to bring an almighty judgment. He rises up his prophets to do what? To warn the nations and to wake up his elect. To see if he can get them out of there, get them to repent and come back to him. Anytime the Lord is coming with a judgment, it's, it, when it's upon Israel in specifically, he always raises up his prophets first to warn them. So we are those same prophets here today in the reincarnation, telling you what's going to be for the world, what's going to be for the children of Israel, the elect, and the wicked two thirds. Right? And what's going to be for the heathen nation we're here today we are the same prophets so it says here so we're going to go back to the book of ecclesiasticus chapter 36 verse uh where was we verse 14 it says fill zion with thine unspeakable oracles and thy people with thy glory that's what he's coming to do he's coming to fill zion right which are the children of israel it says, give testimony unto them that, that thou hast possessed from the beginning and raise up. Sorry, give testimony unto them that thou hast possessed from the beginning and raise up prophets that have been in thy name. That's what he's done. That's what we are. We are the Lord's prophets. The Lord has raised us up to preach this word, to wake up the elect and to warn the nations. It says, reward them that wait for thee and let thy prophets be found faithful. That's why we talk about enduring this road to the end. We want to be faithful to our Lord. We pray that the Lord keeps the Holy Spirit on us and blesses us with the Holy Spirit to continue teaching and preaching his word in the name of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Right? It says, O Lord, hear the prayer of thy servants according to the blessings of Aaron over thy people that all they which dwell upon the earth may know that thou art the Lord and the eternal power. And all them that dwell upon the earth are going to find out that it is only one Lord, one power, one Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Simple as that. So, oh, I give you praises that the Lord put the Spirit on me to bring out this lesson today. Today's edification was called Judgment to All Nations. That's going to be for them according to biblical scripture, not according to my heart or my feelings, but according to biblical scripture. So on that note, I want to give all the praises and the glory to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rekar, Kadash. I pray this was an edifying lesson to all of the Akiyams out there, all of the brothers and sisters, and all of the hopeful elect. Give all praises and glory to Yasharala. Shalom to the hopeful elect. Shalom to the elders of, of Great Millstone. Until we meet again, brothers and sisters. Shalom, shalom, shalom. All praises.